Trader Tina here once again from shortmetina.com with my daily recap. Today is Monday, so I'm going to say happy Monday. Hope everyone had an enjoyable weekend, especially considering what went on in the markets today. So we're going to jump in and recap a few, um, I'm not sure stocks, but we're going to recap a few things. Uh, and well, I just want to thank you before doing that. I just want to thank you for being here. So thank you. Do me a solid thumbs up if you learned anything from this video or if it's enjoyable and definitely make sure to comment in the comment section. Uh, as I've stated before, it gets these videos out to traders just like yourself. That's looking for some level of guidance anyway. So let's kick it off and start with the SPY S&P 500 daily chart uh, dating back to 2017 in a really unprecedented day. Uh, this particular ETF is off a whopping 7.11% on the day. We closed at 276.32. Uh, the low clocked in at 273.45. So in many respects, when you pay attention or when you take a look at today's high of 284, you contrast that to the low and the close of 276. In my opinion, we closed relatively close to session lows, which means that this selling, as odd as it might seem, may not be over. We might see continued downside heading into uh, trading tomorrow, and you definitely need to be prepared for it. Uh, for anyone that subscribed to my free weekly newsletter, which I release every Sunday, I essentially said, listen, you want to trade in, 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 you want to trade in environments that are conducive to your style of trading, right? And so for me, while I can sort of trade these shorter term moves, like that would take so much emotional, uh, capital from my end, uh, and it's just something that I just don't want to give this market in particular. So I've said I've taken off my shorter term uh, trading hat and I've put on my investor hat. So right now I'm just looking for stocks that I want to hold in my longer term portfolio, all the while keeping my eyes on the markets just in case those shorter term trades do come up because there are about, I want to say, a handful of stocks that I'm looking to get into, stocks that I believe have the potential to be acquired. Uh, and so these types of environments, in my opinion, are ripe for acquisitions and mergers. Uh, and so I have my eyes set on about five stocks, waiting for them to get down to uh, relative support levels before buying. And uh, and we will hope for the best. Anyway, let's again, I segued a little bit, but let's uh, get back to the SPY. It's a daily chart dating back to 2017. On Friday, we closed right on that support or between that support level, uh, once resistance of around uh, 295 to 300. Specifically, we closed at 290, uh, pardon, Specifically, we closed at 297.46. Uh, so for those that were expecting a bounce, uh, the market said not so today. We opened up, we gapped down, and it was nothing but, for the most part, selling all day long again, eventually to close at 276. So you ask, what's the, level, uh, what's the next level of support for me? The next level of support is right here. I'm sort of shaking that line that comes in around uh, 260. Uh, just given what we've experienced the last two weeks, yes, the market can potentially get to 260 and even revisit, it is not out the question at this point, and even revisit December lows right here. You see that right here, which will be underneath support, we can perhaps even revisit uh, December lows of around 234.27 and the market perhaps can uh, drift a bit lower. Right now, I'm not committing to the markets drifting lower uh, once we or if we get to two, uh, 234. I'm just paying attention to how the market is going to react when and if it gets back to that 260 level. And that should tell me more or less whether or not more selling uh, is underway uh, or if we should get a bound. So for me, what I'm paying attention to, uh, obviously, is uh, the lows of uh, 260 or support of 260. What else? All right, and really quickly, IWM daily chart did not fare well. In fact, fared a lot worse than the other uh, major indexes. Uh, this one is down north of 10% on the day. It's usually what happens. Small caps usually get clobbered. Uh, we closed at 130.30. Session lows, 130.26. Again, closing close to session lows tells me that the market might actually continue the selling into the next trading day, which is 
tomorrow, Tuesday, March 10th. Uh, you can see here uh, the uh, IWM actually broke through this, uh, you can say the secondary or third support level of 134 to 135. And what's on deck right now, it's highlighted here, would be December 2018 lows of 125.84. Can the market get there? Absolutely. So right now, uh, we are we're trading closely, very close to uh, December 2018 levels uh, of around uh, 125. And that's sort of where I am paying attention to. Uh, there's a chance that if it gets there, the market potentially can get a bounce. But I'm um, holding and bracing myself for more selling tomorrow. What else? All right, and let's uh, touch base with gold daily chart. It's up marginally on the day. Uh, if we were to look at gold as any indicator, then we should have been really cautious uh, towards, I want to say, uh, mid 2019 around August, July, somewhere around there, because that's when I said August here, that's clearly when uh, gold broke out of this long, long ch uh, channel dating back to 2013. You can see it got the break right here. Uh, we retested it, but it held uh, and then it, clear it clearly we're breaking out again. Closed at our 157.90. Again, we're up marginally on the day, but relative to what the market is experiencing, I would expect gold to be up a lot more. So I say all that to say there really doesn't seem to be too many places to run to that quote unquote safe haven spot. The only quote unquote safe haven, it seems like right now in the market is cash and gold demonstrates that again, we're up marginally on the day, despite being down north of 10% in the uh, IWM and seven or 8% in the other indexes. And if you take a look at gold, I'm sorry, if you take a look at utilities, another safe haven that uh, investors tend to run to when the markets collapse, you'll see that there's just been selling across the board. Uh, let me get to uh, that XLU, XLU so you can see that picture. Uh, yes, let's get to that XLU. Again, you can see here that the XLU utilities, again, a safe haven that investors typically tend to run to when the markets collapse, also sold off on the day to the tune of around down north of 5%. Granted, it didn't sell off as much as uh, some other stocks that are down 15, 20%, etc., or the major indexes that are down 7 and the IWM north of 10%, but there was also selling uh, in utilities today. Again, off about uh, north of 5% to close at 63.95, whereas the next level of support, if this cannot hold, around that uh, upper 50s, lower 60s level, I would say specifically, or specifically rather, around uh, 58 to uh, let's say 61, you have support there in the XLU. Uh, also too, other coins like, uh, other uh, altcoins, which investors uh, usually say, again, are safe havens like Bitcoin, you can see as well, they also experience a bit of a collapse. Let's uh, pull Bitcoin up right now. All right, you can see Bitcoin here again, also up marginally on the day. Uh, see a quote of a little shy of uh, 8,000 per coin, but even so, Bitcoin has also pulled back with the entire market correction. So again, it begs the question, where does one go when the market collapse? You know, folks have all, uh, folks have argued that Bitcoin is a hedge when the markets are pulling back. This tells me that it's not a hedge. Investors are also selling uh, this coin today. You look at XLU, utilities, another uh, sort of vehicle investors tend to run to. That was also down uh, about 5% on the day. You want to take a look at gold like I talked about before. Granted, gold was up marginally, but comparative to the insane amount of selling that we saw in the market today, you would expect gold to be up more. Uh, so I say all that to say not to sound repetitive, but it seems as though investors are just selling everything and uh, fleeing to cash, which is not a bad place to be. So let's just kind of wrap it up with one penny stock in typical form. All right, so again, really quickly, let's wrap it up and round it out with our AIM daily chart. Uh, up about uh, north of 200% on the day. It's actually moving in after hours, believe it or not, up an additional 8%, uh, a little beyond that north of 200% in regular session, up an additional 8% in after hours. I see a quote of $6.60. So that gets you somewhere around here, close to today's, not close, but close, 
close to today's high of $7.11. So heading into trading tomorrow, this might actually continue its run. It's a very low float stock, meaning that it doesn't take much to get it moving, evident by the fact that it was up uh, north of 200% on the day. What you're going to want to pay attention to, obviously, two things, how the stock opens up and uh, today's high of 7 .11. Uh, so right now it's actually uh, up in after hours, which actually bodes well heading into tomorrow. That might actually uh, continue into pre-market. And if that does, that's a good sign that the run wants to continue. If we take out today's high of 7 .11, that also tells you that the high, um, rather not the high, but that if we take out today's high of 7 .11, that tells you that the stock wants to continue its run. And if we can take out the high today of 7 .11, on the volume that we've been seeing the last few trading days, I would not be surprised to see this stock trading at 1011, perhaps even another double at 14. But again, high risk stock, obviously higher risk, you get those high rewards. Uh, but you know, from a speculative, speculative standpoint, it might be something you might be interested in playing. Uh, again, I'd be paying attention to how the stock uh, opens up and session highs of 711. If we can take that out, that's a good sign in my opinion. Anyway, we're going to cap it there. Tina here once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of that video, do three things for me. One, again, comment in the comment section. Let me know how you've been, how you've been handling uh, the market sell-off for the past uh, two weeks or so. Are you in cash? Are you shorting stocks? Uh, are you looking to pick up stocks that are on discount for the longer term? Again, let everyone know how you're actually handling this. Are you like me? You're just like, you know what? I'm going to come back when the markets are a little bit more rational. Again, comment in the comment section too. I do videos daily. Make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel at Short Me Tina. And uh, lastly, lastly, uh, I'm hosting right now on our website a free 14-day trading course. Again, just going over some of the things that I've learned trading the stock market for the past uh, 20 or so years. So if that's something that you're interested in, no credit card required, you just need to give me an email address, then definitely head on over to our website, shortmeetina.com. Sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening. And as always, thank you for the support. I will talk to you tomorrow. Uh, stay safe out there.